So everyone is hearing about 5G nowadays, right? How smartphone companies are busy putting the words 5G at the end of their phones. Well, we will talk about 7G today. Yes, the seventh generation of mobile internet connections. Now you might be wondering, 4G is enough for me, 5G seems extravagant, then why do I need 6G and 7G in the first place? Well, the simple answer is that because you do not need 6G and 7G in 2021. For the past two decades, we have seen a jump in the internet connectivity generations every decade. 4G was the buzz around the early 2010s. 5G is starting to roll out now. 6G will be from 2030 to 2040 and 7G will run 2040 to 2050. And each generation has taken the data transfer speeds of the last generation and made it 10 to 50 times faster. Now you might be wondering when will we reach the saturation point of the data transfer speeds? The answer is we have quite reached the saturation point. 4G was quite it and 5G will totally solve the problem of data transfer speeds. But will it? With time, we have seen a bump in the number of interconnected devices. In the 1990s, we had just one computer which connected to the internet. By the late 2000s, smartphones connected massively to the same network. And by the late 2010s, we had a large number of devices including cars, fridges, washing machines connecting to the same network. And add the increasing human population to this. This number is subjected to even increase by 2030 with 6G and will increase even more by 2040 with 7G when presumably we ourselves will start connecting to the internet. But how? Biocomputers. That will be a different video in this series. But increasing devices is only half the entire story. And companies won't just put millions of dollars into R&D just to find out a faster way to download our apps and games. It is way too more complex than that. Let me start with XR, Extended Reality. And it is a mixture of VR, AR and Mixed Reality. And it has evoked so much positive response in the past few years that people are literally racing for it. But truly implementing XR takes a lot of powerful hardware and data streets which are the equivalents of streaming 16K Ultra USG video. Tell me how much more speeds we need. And then we have high fidelity mobile hologram. Yes, those cool stuff you see in sci-fi movies. Holograms are the next generation of media consumption, a step above video which is already a step above audio. Just for a little comparison, it takes a connection of 1 terabit per second to render a 19.1 gigapixels of hologram videos. Doing all the calculations, it would take a connection of 0.58 terabits per second to render a hologram display over a mobile device. And support of a human-sized hologram requires a significantly larger number of pixels that is requiring several terabits per second. 5G tops out at 20 gigabits per second, so it is definitely not possible for 5G. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video, a sub to the channel would be massively appreciated. And at last, we have digital replicas. And yes, it is virtual presence through a digital twin. Users will be able to explore and monitor the reality in a virtual world without temporal or spatial constraints. Just imagine Formula 1 races in which the driver willn't even sit inside the car but will be AI driven. And also, it can help your cousin to visit your home by not even letting him or her step outside his room. Although the only caveat is that he can still break your glass. And these possibilities are over endless. It can help scan crash sites and provide top class facilities and services to even the most remote places of the world. But in order to duplicate a 1 meter by 1 meter area, we need a connection of 0.8 terabits per second. That too considering all compression and a periodic synchronization of 100 milliseconds. But there is another huge problem. Have you faced periods when you do not get a consistent 4G signal and you blame your ISP for that? Well, that is because 4G waves can travel a maximum of 10 miles and sometimes you are away from it. But with 6G and 7G, we can't let that happen. In a literally interconnected world of everything, just a little transfer latency can 
kill people. Just imagine a world in which each car can speak to each other and know their exact position and avoid any car jam ever. But if there is an inconsistent signal, there might be a fatal accident. But in reality, the scenario has gotten worse with 5G and will get even more worse with 6G and 7G. Now look, the only way we are able to provide a better speed and better connection is by increasing the frequency and decreasing the wavelength. That means for a signal with the same energy, a 5G wave will travel a lot lesser than a 4G wave. You could literally have strong and stable 5G signal just vanish behind a tree or a cloud. One solution for this could be to bake in transmitters in each and every furniture of the home. Another solution would be to let every device help another one to get connected to the network. This has been done before and it just got flopped. Okay, so my take is that with the current growth of technology, it should be better to space out the transitions between generations. Like this graph from Samsung actually suggests that the hardware capability of mobile devices won't be anywhere near to those required by holograms. So, it would only be better to see 7G come out by 2050 so that we can put a lot more time into developing the required hardware as well as developing them cost effectively. But the rate at which generations are being envisioned and deployed are falling shorter. Like this graph from Samsung actually suggests that 3G lasted for 15 years, 4G lasted for 12 years, 5G for 8 years and 6G even shorter. So the scenario is only getting worse with time. So just to wrap it all up, the tech is really very cool and I just cannot stop myself from trying all of them out. But there are some pretty difficult problems that need to get solved. And that's pretty much it for now. I'm Arco and I'll catch you in the next one.